guys, Jay Prada Performance here. Alright, uh, you guys seem to like these torque converter videos, so what I did here, and if you happen to watch the other video, I did a video on uh, vibration issues with a torque converter, and we took a popular off-the-shelf converter and checked it for a run out and balance and failed miserably. Well, I was kind of curious about what the inside of this converter looked like and uh, so here it is. So let's kind of go over this, uh, the good, the bad on it. So it's furnace brazed, uh, you can't really see that probably, but it is furnace brazed which is good. Uh, another thing they did, you can see they put some welds here on four sides. Uh, these rivets here tend to come loose, and uh, so this will kind of combats that problem. Okay, that's that's nice. Uh, glad they did that. Uh, just kind of basic OEM stuff, but. You know, for what this converter costs, it's really not much to it, but uh, in any case, so this torque converter, I did confirm this is supposed to be like a, I don't know, one of these, you know, towing converters that is supposed to be highly efficient, uh, you know, basically just supposed to have a lower stall than stock. Well, I do see that they attempted that. Uh, but I have some concerns with it. So if you look here at these fins, and you can see these are really, really bent over quite a bit. So this was actually a high stall pump. This is called the pump. And this is actually a high stall pump because the fins originally went off in this direction against rotation. Uh, to give it higher stall, but what they do is they just they bent these tips over uh, to try to direct the fluid back into rotation uh, to lower the stall. But I don't really care for the way they did that, and I'm going to explain that in more detail in a minute. So this here, there's usually a shield on here that's been machined. Uh, and you know what? Hold on one second. I'm going to go get a uncut stator so we can compare. Okay, this stator is actually a little bit different than this one, but uh, you can see, let me put them side by side. Um, and they are different diameter stators, but essentially the same design. So what they did, you can see you can see where it was machined here and this is one that's not cut uh, so this fin here you know this fin has been cut down a bit uh, compared to the original and it also has a little shield here this shield so what this does uh, well let's see, let's go back to this by cutting this, and they haven't done it a lot, and they did remove the shield, this will actually raise stall. Not really sure why they took the shield off. Uh, if you're trying to make something for high efficiency, I would have left that alone, but I don't know. Maybe they know something I don't, but kind of doubting that. Uh, so anyways, this has got a bearing here, which it normally does not. Okay, that's cool. Uh, this position here, this bearing goes, and you can see they machine these rivets a bit. Uh, let me take the bearing off to clear this bearing. It's kind of Mickey Mouse, but it'll work. But this bearing has the least amount of load on it. Uh, most of your load is going to be the bearing between the stator and here and the pump. And then next in line, uh, to my knowledge, is going to be between the turbine, which is this piece here, 
the turbine and the cover. Uh, and that's still just got a, a thrust washer. I'll show you that. Uh, yeah, you can see there's just a thrust washer here. And it's fine. I mean, it's a big washer. They don't give you any trouble technically, so... Uh, I don't really have a problem with that, but I would rather a bearing there than here. You know, that's more important. You know, not a big deal, being nitpicky, but... Okay, so they put a bearing there. And they put a bearing on this side also. Um, here's the bearing here, good bearing. Uh, so I like that. So uh, let's look at another thing that they did to the stator. See how this has been cut? They've cut this back. Uh, let's flip over and compare this one. You can kind of see the difference when we put them up against each other. And what that is going to do, and let me lay this here. I think you can kind of see. So this is the... Well, uh, let me remove this. So, this set of fins on the pump here is the pump intake. Okay, this is where it pulls in oil uh, from the transmission pump, and the converter pulls oil in from here. And the oil comes out here, goes into the turbine here, exits the turbine here, and then goes through the stator and through the stator and returns back into the pump. And you can kind of see in there, you can see those open windows where they've machined it, okay? And what that's gonna do is it's gonna allow oil to return into the pump better. And that's gonna lower your stall, okay? So that's good. Uh, this isn't the way I machine mine. I have a different way of doing it. It's, a, it's more thorough and it looks neater, but uh, this is, you know, no real criticism on this. It, it's going to help lower stall. It'll, it'll work. Uh, it's not super pretty, but who cares? It's inside a welded assembly, so not a big deal. Uh, so I personally would have not machined this. I would have left this alone and it's okay to do this. And rather than using a high stall pump, I would have used a low stall or a medium stall pump. But, uh, you know, the, the reality too is getting medium and low stall pumps. They didn't make a lot of low stall pumps, so those are hard to get. Medium stalls are getting hard to get. Um, most of these come from lockup converters now, so they're usually high stalls. So you're just kind of dealing with what you can get, I would say, there. So I'll defend them a bit on that because it is hard to get the pump you want. Uh, okay, so I want to talk about these fins and the way they bent them. And this is standard practice, but I do feel, and this is my opinion, and full disclosure, I have not done controlled testing on this, but I guess I'm just making a hypothesis here that there is a such thing as going too far. So basically, you had... Let's kind of picture this as a cross section. So you have a passage that say goes like this, okay? And the fin would kind of lay over at the top, okay? And you've got you've got tabs here. And I apologize my drawing's terrible, but you've got tabs here that hold the fins in place. So you have a little bit of length at the end that you can manipulate. So you can kind of redirect this flow. And if you look, what you've got, you've just got a passage that allows fluid to flow through, okay? Now going in this direction here, of course it depends on which side of the pump you're looking at, but let's just say this is the high stall, uh, so going against the rotation of the turbine to raise stall. So what these guys have done is they've taken this tab 
And they've really abruptly folded it. And again, I apologize, my drawing's terrible. So they folded it. So that's okay, but here's the problem. They folded it so much. Look what we've done here. We've actually, if you follow this passage, this fin is actually restricting the flow. Because if we were to measure, I'm not going to, but if we were to measure this distance of how wide that passage is, and then we remeasure after we folded the fin to that extent, we've choked this down some. And what that's going to do is raise stall. And the goal with this particular converter was to lower stall. Remember, this is a towing converter. This is supposed to be a, a really low stall towing converter, okay? This is not a high stall converter. We would be having a different conversation. So, in my opinion, I would have, instead of folding it to that extent, I would have just gently folded them in that direction so that we leave this passage open, but we're kind of redirecting. And again, taking you know a negative pump like that and turning it into a positive pump, it's not the best case scenario. Uh, this, this does work and it will help, uh, but we are asking the fluid to make a sharp turn all of a sudden, rather than the other pump would already be sweeping in the right direction and if we wanted to turn the fins more, you know, say the tabs are here, we'll put our tabs back in. You know, this, this makes a nice gentle curve so uh, you get more flow out of it. So this, is, this would be the best for low stall. This still works, but again, at the very end we're asking the fluid to take a tight turn, so it will slow it down some. But then when you really overwork it, we actually will reduce this area, you know, it's kind of like choking it down. You know, if you picture just a straight piece of pipe and, you know, whatever oil or water or whatever flowing through it, and then you choke it down at the end, well, that's going to reduce your flow, obviously. And that's what I think we've kind of created here. Uh, so I don't... I wouldn't have folded them to that extent. Uh, let me... You know what I'll do? I don't know if it'll work. It's been pretty manipulated. Uh, give me one second. I'm gonna get a pair of pliers out and uh, fold those a little bit and kind of show you what I would have done if, if this was up to me. So hang on one second. Okay. Um... Yeah, I didn't want to spend much time on it, but I really couldn't get them back like I liked. Um, I don't know if you can kind of see what I was going with here, but they're just not folded over as far. But these have just been, they've just been overbent and manipulated. It's just too hard to bend them back. Uh, so, yeah, I apologize. I, that didn't really work out, but I think you kind of get the gist of what I'm saying here. So... Anyways, I just wanted to show you the inside of this converter uh, because every, you know, the balance and the runout was so terrible on it. I figured, you know, I was just kind of curious as to what it looked like inside. You know, was it really bad in there? And, uh, you know, not the worst I've seen, but I, I don't like it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't reuse this and sell this. You know, this is why, you know, and I get this question a lot, people ask me hey man I got a converter will you do a cut and clean on it or a restall or something I always ask is it our converter and if the answer is no I generally say nope I don't want to do it because I you know you end up with stuff like this all the time and as soon as I do anything to it it becomes my converter you know I've done this years ago and I said, well, man, shoot, I don't really have the money for a new converter. Can't you just kind of, you know, 
cut this one open and I just need a little bit more stall and and, and just just hook me up. I'll, I'll buy a new one next year. Yeah, okay, so you do it and you know, you end up with stuff like this, like this stator. I don't want to use that stator. I want to replace that and, and build another one. I don't like this pump. I don't like how these fins are. I don't want to reuse this either. And by the time, you know, I'm basically going to end up building a new converter for you. It's just not doing anybody any good, you know. And, and as soon as I touch it, yeah, you know that converter you built for me? It's like, oh, jeez. You mean the one that I cleaned for you? Yes. You know, that's just like, you know, that's like me washing your car and then trying to say I built the car. You know, it's, you know, I, all I did was open it up and clean it and, you know, maybe tweak it a little bit. It's, it's not mine. You know, and I don't want to hear it didn't do what I wanted it to do and this and that. It's just, it's not my product. You know, I was trying to help. So, I hate to say it, but I just, I refuse those jobs now, and that's why I don't want my name on something like this. Yeah, I can put this back together, and I can make it straight and balanced, and it would work, but I just don't want somebody to say it's mine, and because uh, I'm not, I wouldn't be proud of what this is in here, and even though you have an understanding with the customer, well, I just, I fixed up your off-the-shelf converter uh, just so it's balanced now. It doesn't mean I made it into, you know, I, I you can't polish a turd, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So, um, I don't want to polish turds anymore. Uh, and this is why. This is, a, this is a perfect example. You know, if the customer, the customer doesn't want this back. Uh, he already bought another one somewhere, but if you sent this to me and asked me to make it right, I don't want to do it. I don't feel right about it. Even if I make it right, I don't feel right about it. I'd rather just build you a new one. It probably wouldn't cost much more money and you'd have something a lot better. So um, if it's our converter, yeah, of course I'll service that, but... I don't want to service this kind of stuff anymore, and you can see why. I hope you can see why. Uh, so anyways, um, hopefully you found that a little bit interesting. I don't know if maybe some of you, like I was, you know, seeing how bad that run out and stuff was, you might have been thinking, man, I wonder what that thing looks like on the inside. Well, this is it. Uh, nothing, you know, nothing special, really. But I've seen worse, believe it or not. But not, you know, not something I'd want my name on. So anyways, I th hope you guys uh, found this somewhat interesting. And um, if you hadn't watched that video on the converter balance, uh, that is this converter here that we're looking at internally. So uh, if you're kind of curious about that and vice versa. So thanks for watching and I'll... Uh, you guys seem to like these converter videos, so um, as I think of more things to do on converters or situations come up, I'll uh, show you some more, and I'll show you some more of these modifications. Uh, you know, you know, a lot of guys, you know, what do you mean you bent the fins? What do you mean you cut the stator? And so you kind of see what some of this stuff is about. Uh, I'll probably, maybe I'll show you how I cut stators uh, for low and high stall. Uh, when I think of it, next, you know, next time I'm doing one and uh, I can do some stuff like that. And I don't know if you can see in here, you can kind of see the little bit of like uh, bronzy looking color here. This is your furnace brazing, uh, which I always tell guys, get at least a furnace brazed or welded fin converter. That way they don't, you know, the fins don't fall apart. Uh, so at least this has that done. It's furnace brace, turbine, and pump. So as well, if, if they had gotten the run out and balance correct on it, uh, the guy would have got a lot of, you know, would have got a lot of years of service out of this. I mean, quite honestly. I think the way they approach the stall is a little contradictory, but I, you know, it would have worked, you know. It's probably a little bit, a little bit lower than stock. 
Probably not a lot, but you can't go too low on a gas engine anyways. I can get these really low, but that's stuff I used to do when I used to do a lot of this same style converter is using the E4OD, and I used to do it on the diesels. Uh, I used it on the C6 too, and people had those old diesel motors, but nobody seems to run those anymore, so I don't really do much diesel stuff anymore. Uh, but, you know, that's a lot of diesel techniques I used to do, but mostly now what I do is make them high stall, so... Okay, guys, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you on another one.